One second, guys. We're back. I'm speechless. Um, you know, I made a video about the Giants, and uh, I'll read the comments in a little bit. But, um, Brandon, how are you? How are you guys? The Giants just always let me down. Um, you know, when I wanted to root for them, their defense played a great first half. And um, they were playing hard today. Um, they can't run the football. There's no deep shots down the field. Shermer's just not a very good coach. Derek, it's playing itself out. Like, I gave Pat a chance. He was better than Ben McAdoo. And I was like, you know what, Pat? And Alex, how are you, man? I was like, you know what, Pat? I'm going to give you a chance. I said, after the bye, I'm going to give Shermer a chance. And he's just proven that he's not the guy. And next week, the Packers are going to beat the Giants. Giants might beat the Dolphins. Probably will lose the rest of their games. And then they're going to probably end up hiring Jason Garrett. And as a Giants fan... I hate to, I hate to say this, but we're just not in control of this thing. It's it's John Mara, and I have to admit, like if the Giants want to fire Pat Shermer and go with Jason Garrett, um, I'm all right with it because Garrett's an upgrade. He's an improvement over Pat Shermer. I think it's the right decision to fire Shermer, and um, you know I want a young guy. I want a Matt Rule or a Kellen Moore, but. This, this this old ownership isn't going to make it happen. Now, I think Leonard Williams played well today. I saw Baker flying around. The older guys like Buffet and Ogletree made a couple of plays defensively. And, like, I just enjoyed, you know, the toughness that the Giants showed on defense, like, in the first half. I, I, I fought the running game. We were stuffing the run. Um, you know, when we blitzed four guys, we got home a lot on the blitzes. Like, Golden, again, had a great game. And um, I disagree, Chris, because um, Jason Garrett, unlike Shermer, has gotten to the playoffs. He's won 12 or 13 games. And Pat Shermer is a terrible coach, and Jason Garrett is a below average, very average coach. So you're going from completely terrible to you're going from a bad coach to an average coach, which again, bad average is better than bad. So I'll take average better than bad because we're not getting we're not getting anybody. No, that that was that was um Shermer was the OC for that team, but that was Mike Zimmer and that and he was on that team, but that was because of the defense. He's not a he's not a coach. He's not a coach. He got lucky because of that one player. The Saints would have won that game. And um, no, no, I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to be rude. Um, but yeah, like if Garrett's the next guy, you know, because who realistically, if the Giants want a young guy, like whoever you whoever you hire has a good chance has a chance of failing. I think Bills Mafia, if the if the Cowboys lose to the um, to the Patriots today in a pretty bad way or in a close, however the Cowboys lose, I think the Bills have a great chance to go down to Dallas and get a win. The Cowboys will be favored, but, you know, the thing is, Josh Allen, he made a mistake today, but the defense, you know, the defense, again, was really pressuring Brandon Allen. He's not a high-level player, um, but the running game of Denver, Denver's O-line just got destroyed by the Buffalo Bills. And top streams, congratulations. And Josh Allen hit John Brown. He had some amazing runs today. The defense really teed it up for Josh today. The defense was absolutely am amazing. And uh, Joshua, you're a million percent right. Um, and, and put it this way, Denver's defense is all right. But, I mean, that offense and that scheme is just terrible. And you guys, I mean, played really well. That Trey Davis white pick was a huge play. And you took advantage when you needed to take advantage, and you ended up winning a football game. So you guys played hard. It's it's an eight and three team. Um, you're not going to get respected until you beat Josh, uh, until you beat the Cowboys. But uh, but yeah. Um, <laughs> you listen, the Bills they've overachieved all year, and they were due for a, for a rough game. 
and it's up to John Gruden and his team to regroup. You know, things happen in the league, and I don't think that the Jets are that much better than Oakland, but I knew that the Jets coming off of a nice Washington trip, I knew the Jets were feeling good, and Darnold today, you have to give the man his props. He played well. He was on time with the football. He played a gr really good game today, really solid. The receivers and the, 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 the Raiders are a running team, and the Jets' strength is defending the run. It was a cold and rainy day. The Raiders had to travel all the way. And I'm making excuses, but the Raiders, they're an 8-8 eight and eight team. You know, if you've watched them all year, they've benefited from a kind of soft schedule. John's done an amazing job with the team this year. And they still have a chance to play meaningful football down the stretch. So the Jets, you know, Ronaldo, you guys were absolutely awesome. I called the Jets win. And um, and the Jets played a hell of a game today. So the Jets are, are I guess, gaining momentum here at the end of the year. Um, and for Sam Darnold, like, if he keeps stacking these games, it'll be important for him, you know, going forward. So he played a solid game, and the Jets were just hitting on all cylinders. It was, it was a, uh, yeah, yeah, the Jets, the Jets mauled him. The Jets mauled him to death. I want to give a shout-out to Kyle Allen. You know, Kyle Allen threw four picks last week, but he battled his tail off today, and Joey Sly uh, just couldn't, he had the case of the rights. He kept blocking misses. He missed extra points. And then he missed a 23-yarder. Uh, the Panthers were down, I think, 14 nothing. played really valiantly to get back. I mean, McCaffrey, again, had a great game. DJ Moore and those guys. So Kyle Allen proving that, he, that he'll get an opportunity next year to be a starting quarterback. Um, Jameis Winston today had maybe his best game of the entire year. And I was dead wrong. I thought Atlanta completely turned the page, and I thought the Falcons were going to continue their winning ways. I was wrong on that pick, and Jameis Winston today was flat out. Um, he was masterful. He makes big-time throws, and Jameis Winston, his job is tougher than like a Kirk Cousins. His job is tougher than maybe Kyle Allen. His job is tougher than Duck Hodges because – he has to kind of carry that offense, and it's really a pass-first attack, and the the Bucks just played unbelievable, and Bruce Arians deserves a ton of credit today. A uh, Thailand, um, I thought that the Jets were were really good today. Um, it doesn't really change my opinion on, on Adam Gase, and um, it doesn't. Yeah, that was a big win for Washington. You know, Chucky, uh, congratulations to you guys. It helps out the Giants and the uh, in the draft position. Um, but yeah, Haskins got the job done. It was nice to see him embrace the fans after the game. Kevin O'Connell um, and, and the Redskins. I think that Matt Patricia now, I mean, he's on the brink. He's completely on the brink. Dan Quinn back to the brink. Um, Riverboat Ron hanging on by a thread. I think that Doug Marone... Um, is probably going to be let go after this year. And then uh, I think Fangio will be back another year. They'll give him another chance. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Seattle for a second. Uh, my friend Brandon Rogers is really good. Um, so uh, Russell Wilson played great. Wentz is continuing to struggle. He's having a real, uh, he's having a, a slump. So uh, he's having a slump, Carson Wentz. We'll see if he can get out of it or not. I mean, his release isn't that quick. He's not accurate underneath. Uh, he'd be better in the Kirk Cousins offense or the running game. I mean, you can't put the offense on the guy's shoulders. He's not that good of a player. Um, Howie Roseman's done a terrible job. Like he got, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Arcega Whiteside instead of DK Metcalf. The Seahawks made a ton of mistakes today. Um, Brandon, you're absolutely right. I mean, Metcalf dropped that ball. Russell Wilson needed to run the ball in. Asinine decision. Um, asinine decision to throw the ball. But again, the turnovers, you guys just causing fumbles. I mean, who gives a shit about the roster, Brandon? Like, I analyzed the roster the entire time. I, I'm here. I think Pete Carroll, I think Pete Carroll can be one of the best coaches in, in football. Uh, Chris, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? Thanks for coming into the stream, man. I want to I want to get on your channel. Um, hit me up on Twitter again, bro. And uh, and yeah, uh, Kevin Knox. Uh, listen, Trubisky. I, I, I was the one guy that was saying hold on with Trubisky. Like he's not as bad. It's hard to find quarterbacks. 
And um, Daniel Jones, I'll put it this way, you know, Jones didn't get a lot of protection. His arm strength is not elite by any means. So I'm going to talk about the Giants here. Um, the Giants in the first half, they had their opportunities. Um, the defense was able to, to, to hit the ball out a ton of times. Um, the running defense that Ferdinand won late was absolutely fantastic. And the Giants just played really hard today. I mean, they were making true string tackles. Even on the Allen Robinson play, 24, whoever his name was, was great. And then um, Rosas uncharacteristically missed the field goals. But the one call by Shermer, that was the point. That third and one, they called a toss play. You can't be calling that type of call. And then on the 30-yard line, Jones never takes a deep shot with Darius Slayton. They never push the ball into the end zone. When they're on the plus side of the field, they never take any deep shots. And I was very, very, very open-minded about Shermer this week. You know, Chris, you can, you know my channel, you know me, guys. I was the most anti-Shermer guy. The bye week happened, right? And I'm like, all right, I just, I have a lot of Giants pride. I listen to people on YouTube and I'm like, I'm going to really root for this team. And in the first half, you know, when, when the Giants, I think it was a tight end, Smith scored that touchdown. I was locked in, ready to go. We got the hold at the end of the half, seven to three, you know, bears come out there. And then, you know, Ballantyne, Ballantyne got toasted today, but it's the kid's first game. We're playing a lot of rookies, but Shermer's offense is really, really bad. Um, and and Shermer, just in the first half, he failed them. And the, the offensive line's not progressing. Daniel is just all right. He's just an all right quarterback, right? He's just like these other rookie quarterbacks. It's it's tough to find like a gem, right? It's tough to find a Kyler Murray. It's tough to find a Mahomes, right? I mean, look at the draft next year. You're picking between Herbert and Burrow or a Tua Tonga Vailoa who's always hurt. So, um, JC, how you doing, buddy? It's great to have you in the chat. Um, congratulations to your football team. I called I called the Raiders sucking. I called that completely. And uh, and clocks. I gave Shermer every chance. I think Gettleman in this D line is actually. I actually think the defense is rounding into shape. And James Betcher, you called an aggressive game plan today. Um, and a couple of times, Ballantyne made play, or or the, the the a couple of times, Trubisky just made plays. But the Giants. They just, you know, huge punt by Chicago at the end. They needed to hurry it up more. Shermer is just not a very good coach. Um, if the Giants decide to let him go, that's probably the right move. And then you know what's going to happen, guys? Is that the Giants are then going to hire a coach in Jason Garrett, who's made the playoffs with the Cowboys a couple of times, a nice guy, a player's coach. And this is the thing. Like, you're dealing with John Mara. You're dealing with the New York Giants. You're not going to get a Matt Rule. You're not going to get an excellent hire. The Giants are not creative at all when it comes to young offensive minds. They have a very rigid sort of database where if you listen to me or you listen to anybody who knows the Maras and the Giants, they want guys who have been coaches before. So they want failed coaches like a McCarthy, a Jeff Fisher, a Jason Garrett. They're not going to take a Joe Brady from LSU who could be incredible. They're not going to take a risk on a Kellen Moore. I would love for them to get Matt Rule. That would be the number one hire. But I think out of all the guys, whether it's McCarthy or Jason Garrett, I'll take Jason Garrett over McCarthy because Garrett at least has gotten the team to the playoffs. He at least will get us maybe to eight wins. He'll raise the bar. You know, we went from McAdoo, who was a complete, you know, freaking asshole, right? Ben McAdoo. And um, I, I, McAdoo was by far a worse coach because the team quit on him. That defense quit on him. The Rams killed the Giants. The Rams killed the Giants. If it weren't for that easy schedule, McAdoo would have been fired anyway. I mean, McAdoo's offense was worse than Shermer's. There's no doubt about it. It's just that Jerry Reese spent all that money. The Giants then, their defense carried them. Their offense was nothing, and McAdoo was a prick. At least Shermer's a good guy. McAdoo, the players hated. And at least some of these guys are fighting for Shermer. OK, and that's why I said for Shermer, I'll wait to the end of the year because he's not a prick. I'll give him his I'll give him the two years, but he's proving over time that he's not uh, good enough. So then let's try to get better and trying to get better is going out there. And if the Giants hire Jason Garrett, I know a lot of people are going to be upset at the hire. But who do you want? 
Who do you realistically want the Giants and Mara to sign? Do you want Kellen Moore? Do you, you're going to throw out all these, all these, you know, coordinators and stuff. You're going to throw out Bill Cower and all of these guys. Garrett is very, very realistic. I like Garrett actually more than Ron. I do. I think Garrett's a better offensive coach. Um, it's, it's a close call, but I, I trust me, Ron just makes a lot of questionable decisions. I want, I'll take Garrett. I'll take his positive attitude over Ron. If we stick with Pat another season, if we stick with Pat another season, um, we're probably going to end up hiring Garrett anyway, later on in the process. So, um, Man, I don't really want Garrett Eva. I'll, I'll take a chance on like a Chase Blackburn or I'll take a chance on a young guy, but it's not me making the decision. I gave you the guys. I gave you Rule, Kellen Moore, and and all these other guys. I think Garrett's better though, Chris, because when you look at Garrett in Dallas, he still led with, with Dak and Tony Romo. He still had 13 win seasons. Ron had one year. One magical year. Jason Garrett has done it over time. He's gotten that team to the playoffs over time. And even though he chokes in the playoffs, the, the organization needs to get boosted a little bit in the right direction. And I believe Garrett is better than Shermer. So you look at those guys in a vacuum. Jason Garrett comes on board. Fan base will lose its freaking mind. But again, the fan base, everybody's going to be throwing out a lot of names like Joe Brady and all and Lincoln Riley and all these guys, and it's going to end up being Jason Garrett. And listen, Shermer's not good. It's about the players, right? It's about our development on the defensive side of the ball. I'll even take a Richard over Jason Garrett. If it's Garrett, I'll ride with it because guess what? Jason Garrett is not a prick like Ben McAdoo. He's a good guy. He's a player's coach. He's coached in Dallas for a while. And you can only hope that he'll put a good staff around him. And maybe, just maybe, Jerry Jones has been holding him back. But whew, looking, at, uh, looking at the Bills today for Ronald, who's in the chat, Buffalo had a really good game today. A really good, solid win. They're 8-3 and three on the season. Um, they played well today. Pittsburgh, Ducky Hodges. I told you my guy, Duck Hodges, is going to come back. And Ducky's going to be the guy. And today's the day of Ducky. I thought that DJ was all right today. The running game, the O-line is, is terrible. I think he's an all right coach. You can't say he's a terrible coach because then he would have gotten fired. Bad coaches are like coaches who get fired immediately. And I know the Cowboys... Um, want them. I don't see it because I think Harbaugh Big Blue is going to beat um, Indiana. Put it this way, with the Giants and everything going on, I'm all about the development of the defensive line. Um, I've worried too much about the coaching decision. I have no power over that. I'm going to keep, you're going to keep being disappointed if you want the Giants to hire a good guy and to save your disappointment, to save your disappointment, you got to think realistically on what the Giants want. I would rather have Garrett than McCarthy. It's just the way that Rodgers got along with McCarthy. McCarthy doesn't seem like a good guy for the for this young group. You need a patient guy, and that's why I'll take Garrett over Rivera and over McCarthy. So you're, you're not dealing with great, great options. I mean, McCarthy, I think Rodgers carried McCarthy to that championship. So you're not dealing with the best, but McCarthy will get it, will probably be in the mix for the Giants job again. It's an interesting point there, Brandon, about the 4-3. I would love a 4-3. Oh, it's no question it's Josh Allen. Josh Allen's a big time talent. Jones is is limited in terms of his in terms of how far he can throw the football in terms of his physical tools. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Josh is going to be the, the successor. Well, the sun has gone down here in uh, Pennsylvania and uh, have to put on the light. I'll take Rivera and then McCarthy last. But these are guys that you, McDaniels is a guy who's going to completely ruffle the organization up. I mean, you saw what he did to the Colts. You saw no one in Denver like Josh McDaniels. 
I just want a nicer guy. You saw the Giants when they had Ben McAdoo, who, who is not a good guy. You saw what happened. Um, it's just really, it's, it's tough, man. It's really frustrating. Um, you need a guy that's going to be in here for the long haul. That's going to go through the ebbs and flows. And you look at the league, right? And there's not that many good coaches in the league. There's maybe only like five. I'll take more over, over McDaniels. I didn't like it, man. When we had the ball at the third, when we had the ball at the 30 yard line, when we had the ball at the 30 yard line, we couldn't get any touchdowns. And that was infuriating. And we kept running routes short of the first down marker. You know, Darius Slayton um, and those guys just kept running routes short of the first down marker. Daniel Jones needs a running game. He's a point guard. He's he can't lift the offense on his shoulders. And, and that throw to Tate was a big time, big time play to just keep the Giants alive. So you see glimpses of heart, the running at the end of the game. Um, I loved it. <laughs> he called those timeouts early. I agree with you. Um, I agree, man. I agree. But then the Bears had a great punt and. I mean, the Giants just, they, they, in the interior part of the line, like Hernandez, everybody just gets beat. And it's just so frustrating. They can't they can't sustain a running game to save their freaking life. And I, they just need, I just really think that this O-line ha, it can play a lot better than, than they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I would have kept it, but I was more offended by the third and ones, or I'm more offended when the Giants get in the plus territory. That's time to go throw to the end zone. Like it said, it dilly, the Giants just just kind of dink and dunk around the red zone. Like they're they're almost afraid of it. It's like hot boiling water. Like they're uncomfortable being in the red zone. They're really scared. They're 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 really really uncomfortable. It's like me going to a a nightclub and just kind of fiddling around with the, all the hot chicks. It's like you know you're not you're not playing aggressively. You're not playing aggressively. And and when you get in the plus territory. When you get in the plus territory, you got to go to the end zone. You got to go to the end zone and make touchdowns. First half, it was right there. The defense laid it on the line for you. Your defense isn't perfect. The back end guys, are it's a, it's a mess back there, unfortunately, with Ballantyne and all these rookies. And maybe they'll learn, right? And I know Rodgers will make it tough. But, but there were good blitz calls from James Betcher. Like, he carried their weight. The defense gave you a chance to win. Third quarter was where the game was lost. The third quarter, they sucked. I mean, play after play, long plays. That Jones fumble was a terrible fumble. Completely agree with, uh, with you on that one. Um, and the third quarter, you can't have that terrible of a quarter outside of a halftime. And to be, what was it? It was ten. To, it was ten to uh, seven to three. To have it be seven to three, that was really disappointing. And then the third quarter, it was brutal. It was a brutal quarter. I was pissed off. They just came out really, really, really flat. And then Ballantyne was against Allen Robinson, and um, the defense got shredded. But at least the defense still, like, at least during the red zone, like, they showed mental resolve today. And there were there were there was physical tackling on that defense today. When the Bears tried to run it, it was very, very physical, physical tackling. But Corey Ballantyne, this is his first game. Go with the growing pains. We got to have a 4-3 defense, a million percent. I want to see it happen. But Marcus Golden, we're essentially kind of playing that. And the blitzes, I'll tell you what, Jabril Peppers, that return, Jabril needs to be returning every game. And um, third quarter, that sack fumble, this offense is just not good enough, okay? And there's no deep plays. Um, I'll rate Sam Darnold today. A nine and a half out of ten. He was he was really really good today. He looked better than Carson Wentz, right? We'll see in the long run. But today, let's just talk about today, right? Because this is a, a a win now league. He played really well. He had a, listen. I mean, yeah, he played he played great today. I'm not even going to talk about anything else. Sam Darnold today and the Jets 
really good stuff. Now, I'd rather have Shermer than Gase because Gase is a ticking time bomb. Gase is a ticking time bomb. And even though that team's having success, he is not a stable personality. Antonio, you're right because you needed the Saints to lose. And the Panthers came so close and they played so tough. Again, Riverboat Ron kind of preparing his group. It might be Ron Rivera. That, it's a tough one, Garrett or Rivera. But I'll tell you, Kyle Allen today, Kyle Allen had the game, right? Duck Hodges, Kyle Allen. I told you guys that Kyle Allen wasn't as bad as last week. He's one of the most underrated players, quarterbacks in football. And uh, Panthers, play, Panthers played their guts out in New Orleans today. Their kicker couldn't hit anything. Um, overall, it was a fun 1 o'clock hour, Jameis Winston. And... Uh, the Seahawks today, I mean, Seattle Seattle was a lot better than Philly. Philly's a turnover machine right now. So, um, but Chris, like, I'll still, listen, they, they're firing Shermer. I'll ride with, I'll, I'll take Jason Garrett in here. I mean, because, again, we don't have control over the situation. I don't think you're gonna like Riverboat either, or Mike or McCarthy. The Giants are they're in the nine and they're in the nine and they're in the nine win territory. I just think we we look at Garrett and you know you look at Garrett and he has a talented roster and he's kind of just like a happy go lucky guy. But if you go back and look at his statistics since you know he won thirteen and three with Dak as a rookie. Uh, he's gotten the pl the Cowboys into the playoff games last year. He won a playoff game. And, uh, yeah. Guess who comments? From Toronto. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for watching me in Canada. <laughs> um, I'll answer your question about the Buffalo Bills. I appreciate the question. I think that the Bills are trending really well. Um, today, Shaq Lawson maybe had his best game as a Buffalo Bill. Uh, Singletary and Josh Allen had some big runs. Um... And I'll just tell you that I think that Buffalo this year is certainly a playoff team. Um, I really like what I see. And they're going to have a game at Houston. If they get if they get the number one wild card seed, that Pittsburgh Bills game is huge coming up. And, and they'll have a chance to go on the road. Allen's a great competitor. And the Bills are a solid organization. I think that they're building solidly. I think that McDermott is a fine coach. Dable is fine. And the Bills are, are a solid organization. I don't know if they're going to do anything special. I, in fact, they're they're probably not. In terms, if they win a playoff game, that that's a heck of a run. But a Josh Allen and this young core, it uh, it really is good. And they win games with their defense. They benefited from an easy schedule. But I think the team can even get better and better. And just winning gives you confidence, right? And Josh Allen hit John Brown today. And uh, the Bills are just, their defense is there, but their quarterback is also an underrated good player. And they take care of business. You'll take a playoff game. You'll take your crack there. And New England, I mean, when Tom Brady leaves, you'll have your chance. And you got a quarterback. And it's a shame that you're going to have to pay Josh Allen because the fact is, try to get Josh Allen on a cheap contract so that you could keep this defense, man. Um, I mean, listen, I mean, things can happen. I think that this year, I mean, take a shot at the wild card round and you, you might hit lightning in a bottle this year. You know, this might be the year. I don't want to hear about next year for Bills fans. You got to think this year, man, because look at the Eagles, right? Look at, there's so many teams that have aspirations going in the seasons and they don't, and they don't pan out. Look at Atlanta, right? Everybody thought Atlanta would always just stay good, stay pretty good. You fall off a cliff in this dang league. I think that Jones is all right, um, but today was a winnable game. First half was there. This team just this team just sucks for periods of time. Like they go for the worst quarters in the world. You can't play those kind of quarters. You can't be. You can't play these kind of quarters and, and expect to win. You can't have disasters, and then you're fighting back from disasters. The team just shuts off. It can't. It can't sustain for sixty minutes. 
It can't, man. It can't sustain for 60 minutes. It can't. And, um, but the effort is there. Um, we're fine tuning and like a Ron Rivera getting, getting the nod or a freaking, you know, whatever you'll take a Garrett over a Shermer, right? I'll take that. I mean, this team is coming around. It's really frustrating because I want these guys to win, but offensively their O line is not good enough. The secondary is not good enough. Um, if you get Chase Young, you do it. If you take, you take Andrew Thomas, you take Andrew Thomas. Chris, thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate you uh, coming in and uh, talking. has been fun. Um, get back to work and play Green Bay and have some fun and don't quit on this guy. We're going to get Thomas or S or, or AJ Espinoza from Iowa and I'll, and I'll take it and I'll take it. We're not going to be high enough. We're going to beat Washington. I think, um, and I don't even know if we win that tie break, you know? And we still play Philly twice. Like, Philadelphia, they're not even playing that well. <sighs> hmm. It's so funny because I've been the guy kind of rooting for them to lose. And now, understandably, I mean, if Chase Young's there, you guys are gonna you guys are gonna be hoping for them to lose now. You know, the thing is Cincinnati, right? Cincinnati might still take Chase Young. He plays at Ohio State. He's a freak player. Um, Cincinnati might take Chase. You know what I mean, guys? Like, that might happen. And the lights go off, right? Can't pay for the bills. But Cincinnati might take Chase Young. So I'll believe it when it could happen, man. I'll believe it when it would happen when it could happen. It would be great, but I'll take Espinoza or I'll take uh, Andrew Thomas. I don't know. I'll, I'll, AJ's going to be a good one too. So we're all right. We're all right. We got pieces on this defense. We played our guts out today. I'm proud of this team. I'm proud of this team. All righty, guys. We had fun on here. Thanks for coming.